Good afternoon, it's the Civil Savage 76, otherwise known as Rex Knickerbocker. Today I want to discuss something a little bit different with you all. Um, has a little bit to do with me, a personal little deep dive. Uh, I'm going to discuss to you today uh, what it means to come from something known as old money. And what is old money exactly? Well, it doesn't necessarily include wealth itself. What it is is wealth that has been in this country for generations upon generations. So I grew up in a lower middle class home, uh, but on the weekends, my life was far, far different uh, with respect to socioeconomic status. Um, I have some very high profile people in my family, uh, namely my great grandfather, which I've discussed a little bit before. Um, and growing up, I had these opportunities, you could say, to enroll in private school, uh, go to Milton Academy uh, High School, which is probably one of the most snootiest high schools in the entire country. And my grandmother on my mother's side had the strings to pull to get me into Milton Academy. Uh, I had some friends in public school. I enjoyed my life as an ordinary boy. Uh, and there were a lot of uh, issues early on because when you come from an old money family, namely you have old money grandparents that have a townhouse in Wellesley, townhouse in Fifth Avenue uh, on Manhattan, on yeah, in Manhattan where I grew up going, uh, a $7.2 million waterfront manure in Gloucester, Massachusetts in a community known as Eastern Point. Uh, I've existed around this network, you could say, of people who you'll never meet unless you're born into the necessary networks to know those people. Uh, so while I grew up white trash on one hand, on another hand, I was, I was around, uh, like my grandparents were members of the Brookline Country Club. They turned Tom Brady down. You know what they said to Tom Brady? You can take your new money and you can walk right out of here because we don't need your money. And that's what old money is. It's not a celebrity or a rock star or an athlete. What it is, is very quiet money that has been well established long before I was born, or you were born, presumably. Um, and my whole life, my grandmother tried to entice me with the supposed virtues of academic excellence. And she wanted me to go to Kaplan and take these SAT preps. I never took the SATs. I never planned to. I told my grandmother very early on that I had zero intentions of, of attending college. But then I did, and I had a 3.8 at the University of Massachusetts, Boston, without even trying, and often under the influence of drugs and alcohol. I was carrying five courses, all of which were no less than a 200 level course. And I maintained a 3.8 grade point average for shits and giggles. And then I dropped out because I knew what I wanted and it wasn't college. I had a very promising set of career goals uh, with respect to mixed martial arts. Uh, that didn't work out. They found out I had a heart condition uh, that I never knew about until the age of 23. Uh, I used college sort of as a stepping stone while I did my, my rigorous training in Framingham, Massachusetts under some very respectable uh, fighting names. Um, then when it came to the diagnosis, uh, that was the death of my intrinsic purpose in life, I, I personally felt. I either wanted to be a force recon marine or I wanted to be an MMA fighter. Uh, and both of those things were fairly reachable. Uh, given some of my statutes with respect to physicality uh, and athletic performance. Uh, so while that was all executed, shot, and put in a ditch, um, I had a grandmother that uh, was right there when I had the diagnosis and consoled me and said, oh, don't worry, you're going to be a, a very rich person. You're going to be a very rich man. 
uh, you're going to look back on this one day and you're, you're going to be talking at some investor symposium or luncheon about how you lost your heartfelt career to a heart condition. And she was already just painting this fucking picture like, I'm just going to follow in my aristocratic English Rothschild footsteps and I'm just going to forget all about it because I'm going to have money and I'm going to have the high rises and I could have had all of that at 24 if I played ball with my Wellesley grandmother, which I didn't. And I had no intention to because she's an evil bitch. Um, I also had a lot of people who would hear about my grandmother and the vast wealth that she had to offer me. Uh, and they thought I was very stupid for turning that down. What they didn't know is that my grandmother went to Wellesley College right where Hillary Clinton went, was a part of secret lady societies that worship owls next to fires. And she went back to college after she found out she couldn't have children of her own. And what that did to my grandfather, you can guess what my grandfather did, Grenville Clark Jr., who was a Harvard lawyer and a senior attorney at Ropes and Gray in the Seaport. My real grandmother, or yeah, my real grandmother is probably his secretary from Ropes and Gray in reality. It's not really fucking funny. I mean, it's kind of messed up. There were a lot of secrets. But going back to the loss of my MMA career, when you tell me, oh, don't worry, you're gonna be rich, you're gonna have like, mad girls and like a, I didn't give a fuck because I had a passion for mixed martial arts I was an exceptional wrestler back in my day as a, as a young guy and I had that all pulled away from me after just an entire life of winning medals and placing in tournaments and breaking weightlifting records at the age of 18 uh, so then when that all fell out to me, sure, then I transferred to UMass Boston from Mass Bay and did the whole college thing and put on an act for her so that I'd at least have access to a small stipend that was included in the inheritance my grandfather left me when I was three, which I have no access to, haven't seen a cent of it, and that's because according to my grandmother I didn't play the ball and I, did, I didn't play the cards necessary for me, and da da da, even though I've been homeless, shot at, I've been fucking stabbed, I went to jail in Florida, got fucking all kinds of things. Like, I just didn't want to follow in the, in the footsteps of the, of the coach class, you know, the, the, oh, indubitably and marvelously and certainly, darling. I, I, dude, fuck you. I had friends who were minorities, I had friends from all the wrong sides of the, of the train tracks, and I took great pri a great pride in that. Because I didn't want to get along with other Arthurs. I hated other fucking people named Arthur, or Trent, or one of, these, one of these pretentious fucking aristocrat names. Hated it. So then I went, and I went through beta programming, liberal arts, law major at UMass Boston, I basically did very well as a liberal arts student. All the democratic, communist, piece of shit professors loved me. And as I got good grades and good grades, my grandmother was like getting really excited. And she basically said, in, in my own interpretation, you'll just, you're gonna be a rich corporate shill cock rag for the international system. Oh yeah, you'll be shilling for Pfizer and making money and all these people are gonna like you and flock towards you. And I just wanted to throw up all over her fucking Lexus. I really did. And don't call me ungrateful either. I'm a fucking orphan. My house was foreclosed upon as a child. I even fucking slept in my abandoned house. You want to fucking talk to me about adversity? Come, come down to Tennessee. I'll be waiting with bells on, motherfucker. So going back to what I was saying, I went through this beta programming in college where they taught me how it was illegal to be a man. If you're a white man, you're just a fucking colonizer. And the, the irony is, sure, I might be related to uh, British colonizers, the Rothschilds and the people who carved up S South Africa and took it all over. You know what, I don't give a shit because I denounced that. I denounced those fucking people. And because I didn't want to get in with those people in that network, I ended up being homeless. You know why? Because what happened was, um, I got excommunicated right before I was 27 years old. I got excommunicated, excommunicado like in John Wick, 
right in the middle of one of the worst blizzards in New England broke while I was living in a halfway house in fucking Lowell with convicted murderers. Okay? And that's all because I didn't want to play the game and become rich. And that's what I wanted to discuss with you. That's called the win big, lose big psyop. You can either become this rich extraordinaire in the face of all of your adversities, but the second you even become remotely a product of your adversity and you fall to some of the things that you've been struggling with, you've been fucking rubbed out. You've been rubbed out, forgotten about, left for fucking dead because you didn't want to join the Lucky Sperm Club. You know why? Because I stand for the United States Constitution, national sovereignty, populism, and freedom to do whatever you wish so long as you are a law-abiding citizen. So my grandmother, she probably loved globalism, hated populism, hated my grandfather, Grenville Clark Jr., and he was an alcoholic because he couldn't stand the fact that his father, Grenville Clark Sr., invented the war draft. Yeah, he, he wrote the legislation for the war draft that FDR adopted. He wrote the, the policies for the first 100 days of FDR's presidential presidency. And he rewrote the legal charter for the United Nations. And my great-grandfather was the founder of the Harvard Corporation itself. I would have been a fucking, you know, third-generation legacy if I went to Harvard. And every fucking, every scafoos and their cousin would be all on my nuts if I became this money man by ruining other people's lives, sinking their retirement funds, so I could go on a fancy fishing trip in Belize with the fucking CEO of Chapstick. Please, give me a fucking break. I don't mean to swear so much, but this is a very deep and in-depth uh, look into why I became geopolitically active in calling out global corruption and everything that's going on right now. Um, I'm a targeted individual. I've been followed around by weird vehicles since I was nine years old, even when I wasn't doing anything. And yeah, you can bet it's because when you're related to this shit and high profile stuff and the Rothschilds and all this crap, that's your life. You either play their game or they're going to sabotage your life in a tactical way. What that means is they're going to put people in your life. They're going to fuck you up with drugs, alcohol, illicit sex. Oh, you name it. You name it. I've been psyoped. I've had fucking, I've had girls that knew more about who I was than I ever even, I didn't even know them and they somehow just knew and they were very well spoken, knew everything about me. So, being excommunicated and losing big instead of winning big is why things took a turn for the worst for me for the last few years until I got back on my feet on my own. And today I have a trade, I make decent money, got a great, you know, beautiful girlfriend, and things have worked out for me, but oh shit, what's the fucking occasion? I'm almost 30 years old, and now I know what it's finally like to not live in a white trash home, growing up with fucking garbage everywhere, but then going and hanging out with your blue, your blue blood bean counter grandmother, who fucking just psychologically messed with me my whole life because I'm not truly related to her. Oh, oh, you see, you get it now, don't you? You get it, because I'm a biological insult to that woman, and I guess understandably so, but that doesn't mean you throw off two generations of people. My mother, who's dead, and me. Tried to throw off two generations because I wasn't of your seed. And I didn't play your fucking money game, and I threw dirt on your name. And I'm gonna do it again, and again, and again. You have no idea what the fuck it's like to get excommunicated from your family because because you didn't want to go make six figures. You didn't want to go shill for the establishment. So I guess that meant that I should have died on Appleton Street in the middle of a blizzard because I wasn't I wasn't even able to afford the halfway house I was living in anymore. This was all very difficult for me to discuss, but I hope this perhaps provides you a litmus by which to understand my concerns and afflictions as to the corrupt, fake Biden administration, the bullshit going on in the Ukraine, uh, the media blackout of the truckers in DC. This is why I'm involved in this. Because in some way, 
I feel that it is my sole responsibility as a member of We The People to bring the truth to the people. Even if that means me being poor, even if that means being me being followed around by cock rags that are working for the globalist shill establishment, even if it means that I get killed for this, at the end of the day, my bearing of truth in this world of lies is for you. You might not agree with some of the things I have to say, but you need to hear me out. You need to open your heart and your mind to the truth. And it's gonna hurt at first, but in the end, the truth is gonna set you free the way it set me free. Am I a perfect man today? No, not at all. Not by any stretch of the imagination, but do I strive towards being a better person each and every day at my job, working hard, providing quality service on people's homes? as a tradesman doing pest control? Yes, I do. And you know something? I couldn't be more pleased to be an ordinary man today. And not some Rothschild descendant, useful fucking thumbscrew for my grandmother who doesn't give a shit about life itself other than the opening bell and her private equity. Left me for fucking dead. I want to use a very bad word to describe my grandmother right now, and it begins with C, and I'm not even going to say it. I think I've reached my swear quota for today. I hope you enjoyed this very passionate uh, video testimony. Um, I'm going to have more later regarding ongoing events. Uh, but for now, this was the Civil Savage 76, otherwise known as Rex Knickerbocker. Have a wonderful and blessed evening.